Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's play it forward. Real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 595 is with sports writer David Kindred, his book, My Home Team. Good morning, Dave. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you, Earl. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We got to get something straight here, right here in the very beginning. And is, are we talking about Morton High School in Chicago? And if it is, is it Morton East or West? No, it is Morton, Illinois. It's, oh. it's downstate Illinois. It's in Tazewell County. Okay. 17,000 people. Just plain Morton, Illinois. My, my wife graduated from Morton West, and so she's going, if he's from East, you're not talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, Arrow? Where are you? I'm in North Carolina and sitting next to a beautiful lake at Andrew Jackson State Park. It's a beautiful day in Carolina, sir. I love North Carolina. What city? Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. What have, you, what have you done down here in the Carolinas that's been fun? When you, when you come down here, is, is there an escape that you go to? Because, I mean, you're a writer. Your imagination has to be wide open. Well, I, my wife and I once wanted to move to North Carolina because we, we I used to go, to, of course, I, I did a lot of basketball. Yes. So I was always in, you know, I was always in Durham, you know, Durham or Chapel Hill. Oh, yeah. You know, so I, and I've played a lot of golf around North Carolina. <laughs> you, you've done something with this book, My Home Team, that really does inspire me as a broadcasting uh, um, instructor. And that is, is that you're putting focus on small town girls basketball. You, if you only knew how many times I try to get these new students, go to the high schools, get the stories. Well, that's, that's a good thing to do because there's stories everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had, as I said, I, I, I did sports I've been a sports writer for 50 years at the highest levels of the game, and I had never written about girls' high school basketball. You know, so it was all new to me. It was, you know, I, I of course, understood Title IX in 1972. I did some college women's games, a Final Four one year, 1979. You know, but basically, I had never paid any attention to girls' high school basketball, to girls' athletics at all. Yeah, you know, yeah. Except, say, in the Olympics or the World World Cup. You know, when you can't resist, you can't can't miss that. But I I felt almost an obligation when I started writing about the girls. You know, it's fifty two percent of the population. Yeah. Why should we ignore them? You know, and there's stories everywhere. And I discovered that uh, again, rediscovered that. At age 70, when I started writing about a girls' high school basketball. Yeah. I mean, if you go in unbiased, if you go in accepting the idea that it's not boys' basketball, you know, it's, it's a different game. Yes, it's got some of the same rules, but they play it on the floor instead of in the air. You know, they're not as quick. They're not as strong. But judged against themselves, it's still it's the same game. And it was a... I can't say it was a revelation. I mean, I'm not not stupid, right. you know. But at the same time, it was uh, it was different and it was worthwhile. Mm-hmm. And certainly, the girls gain as much from the competition, or maybe even more than boys do. They're just different, and it was much more fun. Much more. F- I was here. I am here. Thirteen years. I've been to three boys games. I've been to four hundred girls games. Wow. And I went to the three boys games kind of by accident. You know, I, I much appreciate, much more appreciate the girls game than I do the boys. You're, you're right when it comes to girls uh, basketball. And that is, is that uh, for many uh, fundraisers that we have done for communities where the, the radio station would go up and take on uh, s- uh, smaller towns and, and they, would, they would have the girls against the guys. And my God, they would kick our butts on that court. Well, I watched the, the Morton. I watched the Morton girls play. The coach occasionally would bring in five high school boys to play against his girls before big games, before games that he knew they were going to have to be at their best. And the boys would would the boys for a quarter would dominate the game. By the time they got into the second quarter, the boys were all worn out. Yep. You know, the girls would just run past them all the time. You know, it was a, it was a, you know, it was a mistake to underestimate the the strength and the stamina of girl athletes, and I didn't underestimate it for 50 years. I just didn't notice it, you know. And I'm very happy. I felt 
almost uh, an obligation once I re realized what I had done by ignoring girls for 50 years. It was almost an obligation. Okay, I've got to, I've got to catch up. I've got to make up for what I haven't done for the, for <laughs> for girls high school, uh, basketball in fifty years. One of the things, gr growing up in Billings, Montana, playing uh, high school basketball, the thing is the girls' basketball was always the opening act. They would have games at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, whereas we would have our games at night. And I think that your book really opens up the door saying, hey, you better think about this one twice. The girls are, are playing just as hard, if not harder. Well, yeah, and, and, they're, and they're good at what they do. I yeah. mean, once you accept it as a different game, you know, it's not the same game. You can't judge a, a girl's game against a boy's game because it's a different game. The, what the boys can accomplish with strength and quickness and leaping ability, the girls can't do that. But the girls play with more – it's much more of a team game. What the girl – what a boy may accomplish with one move, the girls may need three passes to get the ball to the same place. But if you if you notice the scores, you know the girl scores are basically the same as the boys scores. <laughs> you know, so it's it's not as if the girls are scoring you know twenty points a game. Right. They're scoring 50, 60, 70, just the same way the boys are scoring. They just do it in a different way. And once you accept that, you know it's 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 a fun game to watch. It's much more and to be you know really bluntly honest about it. It's much more a game that that boys are familiar with. The girls in high school basketball play a game that that is better than anything I ever played, for instance. You know, and and I think that's true in a, in a lot of places. When did you know that it was time to write this story? What what were, what were you doing in your everyday world where, where all of a sudden it's like, uh, wow, I, 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 I've got my new inspiration for writing a book? Well, this book I is kind of follows the previous book, a book called Leave Out the Tragic Parts, which I wrote about my grandson's death, mm. you know, because I could not not write that. I had to write that book. I had to find out what happened to my grandson because I loved him in ways that I had never imagined loving anybody. Mm -hmm. So I needed to write that book. And then the publisher, Public Affairs, wanted a, a second book, and they suggested a, a memoir. And that's what this is. It, you know, and So it's half my time as a newspaper man and half my time writing about the Morton High School girls. Um, and, and it serves kind of as a prequel and a sequel to the Leave Out the Tragic Parts book. And that it tells about my life and with my wife before Jared's died, before Jared's death. And then it tells what happened after mm. that. Um, so that's the structure of this book. You know, it's three acts, call it three acts. There's the first act where I become a newspaper man. Second act is writing about the girls' high school basketball. And the third act is what I'm doing now, whatever it is I'm doing now. You know, what comes now? You know, where does my life lead me? You know, and, and that's to be determined. Right. But that's what the point of this book is. That's what I, I, I love stories like that because you're right about that. It's like we, we all are determined to become something in life. And then all of a sudden, as you as you mature or age, all of a sudden your story becomes a different path. And, and you, you grow with that story and it, you're no longer saying, no, I got to be this. You don't have to do that. Just be you in your moment of now. Well, yes, yeah, I think I boil it all down to writer's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've never wanted to be anything except a writer, you know, it, and it's, uh, it's the way that I express myself. It's the way that I express what I think about life, what I think about competition. You know, basically for 50 years I've, I've written about sports, but I've never really cared who won. Yeah. Never cared once who won. I just wanted the best story. I wanted the best human story every time. And that's what I've looked for always. And you can find the best human story everywhere. I mean, you don't have to be at 17 Muhammad Ali fights or, or 55 masters or go around the world playing golf. You know, you can find the best story, you know, in a, in a little town in central Illinois, a bunch of girls playing basketball, you know, with 200 people in the, in the building. 
and and I enjoyed that, and it, and it it fits perfectly with the with the life that I've led. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need sixty thousand people cheering at a basketball game to enjoy the basketball game. You know, and I think if you, I mean, people have have sat near me at basketball games. And they've learned that they don't talk to me during a basketball game mm. because I don't talk to them. I'm there to watch the basketball game. Mm-hmm. And I watch the basketball game and I hope I see something I've never seen before. And I'll write about that. And that happens all the time. One of my rules of life and rules of journalism life, if you're paying attention, mm-hmm. if you're really paying attention, you're going to see something every game you've never seen before. Write about that report on that and that's what i've done with the girls and it i go into every game thinking that you know it it may be just getting to the game may have been the thing that never happened to me before Mm -hmm. my wife would ride with me in the in the car to to the games you know something would happen i'd write about that on the way to the game you know whether or or at halftime i wrote a column one of one of them about a father whose daughter had twisted her ankle in a game, the father picked her up off the floor and carried her to the training room. Mm. Well, I've never seen that in an NBA game. You know, so I wrote about that. <laughs> you know, and there's, if, you're, if, you're, if you're paying attention, you're going to see something all, all the time that you want to tell people about. You want to tell people, you want to tell it in a memorable way. In a memorable way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've tried to do. And it's, it's always fun. Do you see yourself as a silent wolf? And what that means in Native American spirituality is, is that you sit underneath the brush of a tree, watching life, documenting life, and then teaching life. I've never heard that before. But exactly right. <laughs> exactly right, Errol. You know, uh, I love that. I'll, I'll have to I'll do a little research on that idea but that's what i've done i've done that forever and and i sit in the third row of the bleachers with my notebook my wife you know would never spoke to me because she knew that i was paying attention yeah you know i sit with what at morton high school girls games uh, grandma row there are four grandmothers that always sit together i'm kind of an honorary <laughs> grandmother i sit with them you know they want me there but they don't talk to me because they know I'm paying attention. And that's the same thing. Yeah, you, you observe life, you, you note life, you try, to, uh, you try to express your understanding of life in a way that, that somebody else might appreciate it. Somebody else might grow from it. Somebody else might say, maybe I better pay attention to life a little more. You know, things are happening. You know, and that's what I do, and that's what I've tried to do, you know, forever. You know, and and I've been able to do that as well at girls high school basketball as I was able to do it at Super Bowls. You know, probably better because you're closer to it. You understand it. You you're, you're part of it. So this whole this book, my home team is is yeah. You know, I I don't treat I treat the girls basketball games as serious basketball. <laughs> you know, I'm not making fun of the, the competition. I'm not. Uh, belittling it or denigrating it or thinking it's not boys basketball how good can it be I'm not doing any of that I treat it as as serious games as serious parts of of life and uh, while looking for the things that I've never seen before have you ever thought about writing a story about those benches inside those gymnasiums because those benches have history to them probably many decades of history I'm sorry, about what? I'm s- about the benches. I mean, when you walk into a gymnasium, those aren't chairs we're sitting in. Those are benches we're sitting on, and those, those, those benches are hard to sit on sometimes. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> yes, there is that. You know, but uh, I've, over the years, I've, de- I've eaten enough milk duds that I've got <laughs> enough padding that the, that the benches don't bother me that much anymore. <laughs> Now, that's a story. Eating milk duds at a girls' high school basketball game. That, to me, is a story. Well, I've written it uh, several different ways. And even 60 Minutes did a a piece on me. They were desperate for something one week, I guess. (laughs) But 60 Minutes did a piece on me. And and one of the things they wanted done 
they wanted to see one of the girls deliver a box of milk duds to me. And, and so they, they arranged for that to happen because that's the way that the, the lady potters had paid me with milk duds. Right. And, uh, a different team, a different player would deliver a milk duds, a box of milk duds to me before every game. Don't you love the community? I mean, you, you truly are a part of the community. I always believe that, yes, you know, going to church is part of the community, but you've got to reach beyond the four walls of the church into the community, and that's what you're doing with this book. Well, I didn't realize that for a long time. You know, I, you know really for a long time I did not realize that because uh, that had never been part of my working MO. Um, I, in fact, I had avoided that. I didn't want that. I wanted to be impartial. I wanted to be unbiased. I wanted to be the the observer. I wanted to be somebody on the outside. Until until at, at you know late in age, late in my life, age seventy five, seventy six maybe, I realized how important it had become for me. So that's when my grandson's troubles began. Mm-hmm. My wife's troubles began. And there were people there for me, you know, and if I had been still the unbiased observer, I, they would not have reached out to me the way that this community in Morton, Illinois has reached out to me, you know, and so that made, you know, the dark time in my life, Morton high school girls basketball team were the light in my life. And so it was important to me in ways that the, that the games had never been important to me before. Mm-hmm. Protecting your writing, all these years of writing, during that transition period, it's got to go to another generation. How do you protect it and make sure it gets into the right hands? I'm sorry, say, I'm sorry, say that again. Errol. In other words, all of your writing, I'm, I've, I've been a daily writer for 29 years. What, what happens to all of your sports writing, your book writing, everything that well after you've been here? I mean, how do you protect it? Because it, it is a huge, huge teaching tool. Maybe three years ago, in, in order to clean out my house, right. I donated everything, notes, notebooks, stories, gathered everything that I could find on the internet and donated it to my alma mater, Illinois. I did that, you know, two reasons. One, to just declutter, declutter the house mm-hmm. because I had everything everywhere. And two, to, to leave something there that, that the university at least thought could be of use to future students. So I've done a lot of that and, uh, uh, and I can't, even begin to estimate how many words that is, but it's in the millions, you know, because I've been a, a published writer since I was 15 years wow. old. Wow. So that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Mr. Dave. Well, you, you pay attention this year. I'm going to be writing online again. You know, starting the first game is in the weekend, Thanksgiving weekend. I'll be writing about the Morton High School Lady <laughs> Potters again and looking forward to that. Uh, and I'm going to keep doing that until I can't do it or they tell me they don't want me to do it. <laughs> well, you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you, Earl. I appreciate your time, appreciate your questions. I, I love this.